The adult beverages are poured, the kids are asleep, it's time for New Dad Gaming, a show about fatherhood, gaming, and new fathers figuring out their gaming lives. My name is Trevor, and I have a one-year-old and a couple months. Uh, <laughs> like I just add that on, and, uh, and change. Um, my name is Gavin, I have an almost one-year-old. Nice. <laughs> See, that, that gets you the gist, you know what to yeah. buy them for presents Ball. now. Yeah, ballpark. So, you know, they're not, they can't quite skate yet, so I'm not going to buy them yeah. hockey skates, but they'll probably yeah. enjoy a ball to throw around. Oh, she's but, loving throwing ball, especially, especially with the dog around. Is is your little one playing with the dog yet? No, they see, he's just started to warm up because he's... Baby fat. or dog? Dog. The dog does not like the baby. Okay. They do not get along. <laughs> so, well, it's fine. It's avoidance, pure avoidance. Yeah. But what's he's discovered is that the kid drops an abundance of food. Anywhere he goes, yeah. this kid is just leaving a trail of delicious baby food. So the dog is starting to understand that, like, okay, if I tolerate this little thing, he pays out yeah, commonly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to the point, don't, action. And, don't bite the food dispenser. <laughs> the one that these two other big ones seem so attached to. Yeah. But they, yeah, and to the point, he's actually fed. Uh, the dog wants, so he's given okay. just a little morsel. So it's, right now, it still all revolves around food. Oh, absolutely, and even that's. But that's then still... again, that's, that's that's your dog. Like, let's face it. Yeah, oh, the, the... we 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 know your dog. We know what dog we're talking about here. Your dog's very... universe is just like hamburgers orbiting cheese balls. Yeah, and that's about it. That's about as as deep as his intelligence goes. Yeah. It's just enough so he can eat a bunch and not yeah. die. That's and then else. chew on a hammer for dessert. Oh, jeez. Yeah, the... Uh... <laughs> so my dog, for... <laughs> to <laughs> to give some backstory to that joke, my dog mm. absolutely loves uh, metallic objects, always has. Uh, like, so he licks his leash, um, the metal part of it. He licks... His favorite toy for the better part of five years was a hammer, which he slowly gnawed the handle off of, to which he was just find it a fine stub by the end of it, and he would lick the metal part of the hammer. Just, I'm talking like hours it was his jam to the point like for christmas like we generally think about just buying him another hammer a hammer <laughs> merry christmas dog here's your hammer because <laughs> it's it's lasted more than any other toy all the other toys he just goes through with such a plume like it doesn't last like even well a week. it's because you're not buying your dog toys at the hardware store that's your problem <laughs> exactly i remember like... when he came to visit my dog and he like ripped the legs off of one of my dog's toys and he, like my dog had had that toy for a long time like a couple years because my dog's like super gentle and precious with his toys, and then yours came in like, Arr. yeah, that's not, it's not it's from like strength. Hammer. Like this is a pug, so yeah. it's not from strength; it's just tenacity. Yeah, it's, like, he comes at it with such vicious, awful ways that I guess toy manufacturers don't figure. <laughs> like, he should really be testing these things yeah. to help him out. Really, it's like he, he'll. It's like when the um, the government hires like hackers to beef up their security. It's like they should just hire this dog. Like beef up their 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 seam work. Yeah, like hammer manufa manufacturers to test how <laughs> how delicious their hammers are, and then toy <laughs> manufacturers to see how this manipulative pug can you yeah. know rip those things apart. Yeah, of course so, the, your pug will just bring a hammer and rip up the toys anyways. So your your dog true. uses tools. We're all lost. <laughs> nice, we're done. Um, yeah, no, our, our baby's starting to play with uh, with the dog. She likes picking up the ball and throwing it, and he'll go after it. Um, he's still not ready to let her pet him, but I don't blame him because I don't let her pet the top of my head because it usually involves either me having avocado rubbed in my hair or her leaving with a fistful of it. So uh, <laughs> she doesn't understand really how to interact with hair. That's also because she doesn't have much herself yet. So... Uh, but aside from that, it's pretty good. And he's been good. Like, if he's not in the mood, he avoids her. Um, most he'll do is maybe just growl a little bit. Um, that's mostly just to, that's also a growl to let us know. It's like, get her away from me. You know, he just goes a little bit to Clint Eastwood on us, and we just throw him over to the corner there. And it's like, okay, then you, we, we will build a barricade around the couch, and he's safe, and you'll have a nap, and he's happy. So, but yeah, dogs and babies. Yeah. Dogs and babies. Yeah, his, he has a, he wants to be, so badly to be friends with the dog, but the dog mm -hmm. just wants nothing to do with him. Yeah. And there's, there's funny, there's interesting interactions because he wants to still even pet it while he's eating, and that's 
especially like a no-go like you do not yeah. interact with this dog when he's eating mm-hmm. it gets real protective so he's <laughs> he'll just plant his face into the food to protect it from him and then just growl like growl at him <laughs> like don't do it like don't do it like i'm gonna get it and it's actually i don't in many ways i'm actually trying to correct the baby on that because i think that's a good sign for him to learn like mm-hmm. when a ba- when dog is a eating but more importantly when he's growling and like ter- yeah. tensed up like you don't you're in the wrong here you should not be yeah, approaching this animal it's also a factor too it's like here's a really good opportunity to teach your child about a real world danger and like sure you can train your dog to stop growling at the baby when they're by the food dish um but you should also take that opportunity and more importantly so to teach your baby to don't touch a growling dog um because that's the better lesson like you know, and like dogs will protect their food. Like that's they're animals. Like we have to remember they're animals. Um, but to teach a kid that it's like, yeah, here's a moment. Like don't do it because this is danger. Like it's doggy doesn't want to be touched right now. Don't touch the doggy. There's far more to come of that um, over the you know the life of your kid than just the manners of your dog. Um, and yeah, it's, I think little opportunities like that to find in life. Like you can protect your kid from the dangers which is obviously an important factor but it's also to take those opportunities like okay now that i've protected you from it but you're you can see it let's talk about it or let's at least you know talk as much as you can to a one-year-old but like <laughs> Draw you know diagrams it'll, for it and... yeah yeah it'll get more more involved but yeah it's those opportunities to be like you know that's danger but this is why and this is how you don't be near it um, it's we had just, one where, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. No, so we had one where the so over the weekend we were with my sister's dogs and they're uh, adorable, like great gentle dogs. But one's like a pretty tall shepherd, taller than my my son. So he comes at my son and he actually gets quite uh, startled by it, I'm like a little mm-hmm. bit afraid of it. And he he recules back and he comes over to me. Now the as much as I can, I'm trying to hope uh, he avoids a fear of dogs. Yeah, because especially like in this city, like it's so crippling because there's just so many dogs like so all many. over the place. Then you go over to a friend's place or a family's place and they have a dog. And it's like, well, now I got a kid that's terrified of dogs. It's a situation. So yeah. like I did my best to so let, let him calm down, let him see it. And then in a more uh, calm setting when the dog was kind of relaxed and sitting, but still even standing up. So he's taller. Like I made sure they were introduced again just to try to it's like, no, no, see, he's he's fine. Like, Mm-hmm. pet the dog like see like how nice he is like oh and the dog again is really a sweetheart yeah so he was super he's happy he's like excited looking, yeah. yeah licking his face and such so it's just trying to that, that's one that worries me as far as like a kid's phobia of dogs because it's mm-hmm. that's a painful one yeah yeah because well especially yeah, as you said like the city if you want to go to any park in the city there's going to be dogs there because there's just not the green space you know there's really not a lot of like dog only areas and you know being a dog owner before being a parent like so many times like i'd be taking the dog to the park and there'd be kids very timid of him and that's when like if the parents were kind of like can our our kids say hi to your dog you know i would be all for it just because it's an opportunity it's like yeah you're trying to break this phobia by all means like you know he's more scared of your (laughs) your kid than than he is you know so um because our dog is such a beta um just just tear incarnate really he's dog. just yeah he, he's a little beta but that's good we love him still so you know he's definitely not going to challenge us for uh, dominance of the apartment which i think would be adorable if he tried though um, god look at you aw. you're so cute <laughs> enjoying oh, yeah who's angry who's angry <laughs> <laughs> yeah dogs nice. and babies nice man so you so you mentioned this week you were too busy working on a video game to play video games. Is that to yep. understand correctly? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty well where my work is now. Like, um, I've got, uh, like one game's coming out in August, uh, another one coming out, um, soon. Um, and then I'm just this one that I'm just starting on, uh, just started production about three weeks ago. And then, uh, and then I might have another one. Well, I not might. I like we're like in pre 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 production. Basically, just pencil sketches and chats. But so three um, pre's. I thought that was more like, do you want to make a game? Maybe. Okay, no, no. We were it. Started <laughs> talking about it and sketching it out and stuff, and um, like early, early, early project stuff. So, 
But uh, yeah, man, indie games, it's fun work, but so what, uh, busy so what work. Does that, um, like, what does that do for your game appetite, though? Like, when you, are you finding that after you're... So you spend your entire day working on one of those games, and then you finish in time to kick up your heels. Does that dissuade you from playing video games, or does it really... Not too do you feel much. separate? No, I'm, I'm okay because I'm from, like, the art and design end, so, like... Like, okay, if I was working as a QA, like quality control kind of deal, like then I could see that I'd be fatigued. Um, but the amount that I'm actually having to pick up a controller and test something out is not as much as, let's say, um, like more of a back end position, like a programmer, seeing, making sure that the code they implement isn't broken. Um, a lot of times, most of my work, I know whether it's successful or not before I even export the assets because I just know from looking at the still. Um, occasionally, like, you know, you still have to pick it up and play it, but it's not like a substantial percentage of my day to throw off my appetite for wanting to pick up a controller and play something else. And also, too, like, you know, you might be working on one genre, but it doesn't mean that you're going to go home and play that same thing. You might go home and switch it up and do something else, so. Yeah, but yeah, I, I was kind of concerned about that at first. It's like, oh, is this going to make me not want to play games? But luckily, you know, the games that I'm playing and the games that I'm making don't really overlap too much. And also, when I'm working on games, it's I'm I spend more time in Photoshop and Illustrator than I do like in a game build itself and and playing around in it. So it still levels out all right. And so. honestly, the little time I get to game anyways would never really like. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, it's still insatiable. Like my appetite's still insatiable, even with the game design stuff on top of it. <laughs> so as I go for the, um, so when you're looking at games though, now have you found you had a more of a, would you call it a critical eye? Would it be more of appreciation of certain elements of the design now that you're in the thick of it yourself? Yeah, I'd say UI, like like menus and stuff. Um, one of my favorite things is if a game has it sit up. Set, the initial setup is like you can just mash A or X, like the primary button, like face button. Um, and you can just mash it, and by just spamming that button until everything loads, you're back to where you left off. And that's one of my favorite little bits of design that that really good games tend to have. Is just like it's like I just want to get back into where I left off. Like I saved, I quit, I'm done. I loaded it up and like there might be a few screens to get through, but as long as I don't have to break that cycle of just spamming A or spamming X to like, I have to like, Oh, I got to go down two and then hit and then up one and then hit like, no, 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 don't do that. Like (laughs) just let me get back to my bookmark and I'm just going to hit one button to do it. And I always find that's that's a beautiful little bit of design. But um, yeah, menus and stuff I find are one of the things where I I'll really get little bits of like, oh, I wish you just had to move this here because this doesn't make any sense. And um, but yeah, I think that's that's the primary one. Um, and then actually, there's a it's not just being critical; it's also being very appreciative, like seeing something. And I think I'm actually a little bit less critical about things like graphics and that, understanding how much. Um, like how many obstacles are in the way and how many things have to be kind of considered and overcome that like if I look at a game like Fallout 4 for example a lot of people rag on it for um, not being the best graphics but like it is an open world game in a substantially large area of land and some of those Vista moments are like it's a it's what I refer to as a, a, a big brushstroke game so it's like it's a game that you admire it for it's like an impressionist painting as opposed to like a renaissance painting where it's not about the detail and the finer work it's about the overall sweeping nature of the composition as opposed to like look at how realistic that pressure cooker is on the stove and it's like you know uh apparently the new uh uncharted game is fantastic for that aspect and it also has some really beautiful sweeping moments as well and large brushstroke moments as well. But like some games can be very successful just looking at breaking down what this visual should be in its most basic color, shape, and form. And uh, like follows like that. Uh, Firewatch is a beautiful example of that because it wasn't just done for the sake of economy. It was done for the sake of design um, and aesthetic. So, so yeah, yeah, I, I 
become more appreciative of like what they're able to do with what restrictions were put in place. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And then there's other times too. I'm like, oh, that come on, that's sloppy. Come on, pull your socks up. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of actually kind of makes me think about the um, we're trying more and more to read to uh, our son, just trying. To, always have but trying to even step it up a bit further and especially ones that teach words and such and numbers mm -hmm. and some of these uh man some of these some of this artwork really feels like they're not trying it's, oh, yeah. it's like they're, they're lousy so they just decided to make a kid's book because like ah this is easy i'll mm -hmm. just like i'll just put whatever i want on the page and some of it you, you can appreciate that it's trying to be i would almost call it like sloppy in the sense of like hey kid you could have done this too like so it's call it like their level that would but there's some that even with that style, you can tell that it's purposeful and still being artful. And then there's others that are just, I don't have to try hard because this is for babies. Uh, yeah. Are, that's really uh, starting some... to like drag on me a bit. Okay. Sorry. No, I'm just saying the, uh, no, that type of um, going through these books, like that's really just starting to drag on me. And, and there's two yeah. ways part. One is, one is either like they're trying to be too sweeping for a page that's going to be open for the better part of like five seconds mm -hmm. or it's just, yeah, complete like throwaway nonsense. Like where it's garbage art. That, clearly, clearly this person isn't good at art and they decided to just do a kid's book because who cares? Yeah. Like, well, it's, it's a combination of that. And I think sometimes too, like uh, having done some work in that field for a few years, um, budgets for kids books can sometimes be very very low so it's also just a matter of like more often than not it's a publisher and author um and the artists that they can afford are just not of like they're ones like, that are really really just starting like out from accounting you mean yeah or they're it's more of a hobbyist approach um like you, you do see that very very frequently and it's like it's the artists who didn't take the time to sit down and do the math and figure out how many hours is it going to take me to paint this? How much can they afford to pay me? Would I make more mowing lawns? <laughs> um, and I'm not kidding. Like that's, it's, it's, it's wow. literally the type of math that a lot of artists just don't do. And, and that's how a lot of these projects end up getting made. Um, which is sad, but uh, they're actually talking about artists and uh, children's books. There's this one artist uh, named Charles Fuge, um, like Charles and F-U-G-E. Um, he does this one series called Little Wombat. Little uh, Wombat. He's an illustrator, yes. works with a, a variety of different uh, writers and that, but his stuff is just some of the best watercolor illustrations I've seen in so long. Um, we've got a, a collection of his stuff already and it's just, oh, it's so lush and pretty and the, he does animals with such life and like just, you, you just look, you just want to hug him. You just want to hug a little wombat. Um, That's awesome. it's just some of the, it's, it's a, it's a book that I enjoy reading to her because I really love looking at the illustrations. And every time I look at the illustrations, I find new little details like, you know, like a little, worm poking his head out from a bit of mud around the corner making a funny face and it's like you know i didn't see that three read throughs ago and it's like just this sort of you can see a lot of love in the work and in the illustrations and that's the type of stuff that i get really excited about is when like you can see somebody actually you know giving a crap about it like that's yeah, the thing feels like that kind of feels like the next pixar type of situation where if they could find a way to produce those books that the parents enjoy too. Yeah. Cause some, Cause some of these are just like, I mean, I mean, it's obviously targeted for kids like, and they're supposed to be fun and approachable. And some of even you can kind of play around with your voice and have fun with it. But some of them yeah. are just such drivel. Like, yeah. Some of these, these books are so bad sometimes. It, it is. Even, like, it's like, you have to kind of, there, it's like a needle in a haystack sometimes finding the good ones. Like uh, another one we really like is called the Gruffalo. I'm not sure if you had that one yet. The Gruffalo, no. Yeah, oh, it's really fun. And it's fun to read, too, because it's very voice fun. Um, like, it's just, it's about this little mouse making his way through the woods. And it's kind of like, it's a it's a, a play on the boy who cried wolf um, yeah. kind of thing. But then, like, the wolf shows up, and then the boy tricks the wolf to convince all the townsfolk he was right all along. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, it, it's fun. It's a good one. But, yeah. Nice one. Yeah, so it's, one it's, that I like if um oh sorry, go on. 
Who oh, no, so, so, um, I didn't really have any decent point. <laughs> Sounded like I cut off a wonderful thought. No, we'll, no. we'll never, we'll never know. No, the uh, like when we had, for instance, it's um, you. Can I? I'll apologize in advance for the name. Yusuke Yunenzu, and the book's called just Yum Yum. Okay, and and it, it's fun enough because it's uh, like what is a what dish would you feed to a cat? Of course, it's fish. Like yum yum. But, and then each of the pages have cutouts of the mouth. So you read the one sentence about it and then more, like, yes, more, please. And then on the second page, it overlaps to look as if the thing is in the kid's, the animal's mouth. Okay. So that's fun enough for the kid because it's a little bit interactive. But, like, the art style itself is super, you would almost call it childish. Like, mm -hmm. big, like, blotchy lines. Um, like, super simple colors. But it's done in a way to be aesthetically pleasing like it's artistic like it, it, it's with um it's not a throwaway this is how easily i can draw a cat this is i have a style and i have a um approach i'm trying to get and you know you read something like that and that book is one of my more favorite to read because it's yeah even from like you're looking at it you can appreciate it in its entirety so it's not just looking like uh, garbage the um so <laughs> we're just like getting into like kid book corners too. We're, we're yeah, really, like, we're covering. <laughs> here's what we like to drink. <laughs> here's the games we play, and oh, here's some uh, here's some books you can read. Maybe not yeah, necessarily in that your, order. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's tough, man. It's it's, it's like tough. bizarro like, Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of tough, though, and you see that with uh, I've noticed it with parent friends where you just start to pass around the good ones. Yeah, like the good ones that either like work on kids or that you you know they themselves just kind of appreciated. Yeah, because it seems I like think if anything too, it's it's a it's a one two punch. Like if if a parent really likes reading it, they're gonna do it with a little bit more gusto, and that's gonna make the experience better for the kid. And then the kid is going to enjoy that book more, more so because they know if they pick that book, you know, mommy or daddy is going to you know give it a hundred and ten percent. If they pick that other one. You know, they're just going to phone it in. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Donnie the dragon went down to the street. Uh, 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 yada, yada, yada. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the prince is so, thrown away. It, it's finding that good one where it's just like, yeah, the, the, the kid likes the enthusiasm as much as they like the story. And if it's, you know, so it could be that. Like the Gruffalo was one that got recommended to us by another parent. So, and like here I am recommending to another one. Like it's like, you know, it's a... Uh, word of mouth sort of thing. And I think that's where you find the, the good ones. I think Wombat was one we sort of just stumbled across, but it was, uh, I'm happy we did. Cause then we just picked up the rest of the Wombat series. I'm keeping my eye out for other books that he's done. Um, mostly just cause I love looking at his illustrations. They're just a pleasure to look at. Yeah, no, that's um, a good time. yeah. So let's move, uh, to a new corner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't even, that was quite the segue because we went from what talking about, Making video games to critiquing video games to critiquing artwork to kids' books to we just, just kids' books. And we just jumped off a cliff, like, okay, let's st stop talking about books. Enough of that. <laughs> so I'll speak about. Um, so, uh, so, for what I played this week, I, it's still just been uh, Just Cause. Well, I'll say one mm. thing I finally won a game in NHL 16. Oh, nice. And it's just, man, I, you start to, when you begin to understand it, it becomes a little bit more fun. I'll say it wasn't very approachable. Mm -hmm. At first, especially like if having skipped a couple years of playing these games, like so, I probably like lost a bunch of the like. Th it's always like a bit of a language like a, to playing, like a games. learning curve fall off. And exactly. that's the thing too is like the things that they might have implemented in those other previous two years. Like you're not just learning what's new in this year's version, but you're also having to catch up on what they've implemented in the last previous two years. So it's like you had three years worth of new gameplay mechanics to learn in one play in one kind of, you know, version of the game. Yeah. And I'll say that they definitely make you work for those goals. Like a lot of times in previous games, like you'd eventually find the method to score the goal. Like I remember one year it was like, we're introducing one timers and just every, <laughs> every time you took a one timer, you had like an 80% chance of scoring. So that game was about, can you set up the one timer slash goal? Yeah. Um, I remember the one year I found out that if you skate down, shoot it at his um, bot up to the bottom right where he kick out his pad, you can get your own rebound and score like every time. So I had games where it was like you know twelve nothing and just 
or man the famous one from jeez i think it's nhl 95 or, or stanley cup 95 there's a super nintendo it was third person hockey so whoever you were controlling you were behind the player oh it was it's man i went back at one point and tried as an a, a emulator it is weird it is a that hard is... game why didn't it wasn't there one like a few years back that tried to implement first person hockey for like the fights see okay for the fights maybe that would be kind of a, yeah that'd be cheeky but i remember so I this nhl like game 60 era but yeah it was like there was first person fights yeah I, that's I can imagine parents getting upset about that like just like yeah just looking little... at your kids like throwing like <laughs> throwing punches in this other <laughs> In an aggressive fashion, too, because it's not like it's boxing or MMA. Like, this is just another yeah, sport where people have lost their temper. Yeah, you're literally just trying to get the person to spit out chiclets. Like, that's all it is. Yeah. Like, you're not... It's like Bar Fight Simulator 2016. Yeah. <laughs> so this, uh... for everyone. <laughs> so this this game, you would go to... Um... So I think it was like Stanley Cup 95 or something like that. Um, you would go skate towards the opponent's net and then flick it from center ice... And the goalie's AI would have it skate towards center to come to you, but too far so the puck would drop behind him and just score. So I remember like my brother and I were playing this game, and it's basically a game of who can get to center ice and flick the puck. So as soon as he starts going there, you're desperately trying to hit him because you know he's going to do the trick and get the guaranteed goal. So I don't, <laughs> nothing but that. Like, Oh, that's um, hilarious. But this one, they seem like they've really tightened it up, and there's not a lot of that. Like You really have to be on point and kind of hit the corners and such and i'd say almost to an extent where it's certainly gotten more fun that i've got the curve finally won a game um and felt like i kind of earned earned it yeah but to the point where it's just it doesn't necessarily feel very fun like there's a certain like there's it feels like they're in that uncanny valley now where the game is so realistic that like it's well i should go play hockey i guess like that's what i that's what it feels like when i play hockey it's really hard like, yeah it's, it's, i'm it's, here for some fun you want to just you want to feel powerful you don't want to feel this you don't go to experience what you experience in everyday life virtually because what's just, just live it then yeah that's a weird sort of balance that has to get sorted with with games sometimes is that um is a balance between a simulation and a game. And the closer you get to simulation, the further you get from game. And more often than not, the further you get from game, the further you get from fun. Hmm. Um, Farm Simulator 2014, I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. I've never played the game. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, whenever I do see those on Steam, though, I'm always like, wow, they actually... Like it looks like a fully realized experience. Like it's, not it, not those, for me. Those apparently sell like gangbusters. Those and truck simulators. Yeah. Okay. Oh, anyways. So, well, dad, dad challenge. Guess what we're playing oh. next? <laughs> Farm simulator and truck simulator. Oh god. There's one simulator called Spin Tires that I always wanted to try, but then something went a little south on that. I can't remember exactly what happened, but there was a little bit of a squabble. Hmm some bad bad blood with the developers or whatnot but uh, that was one where basically the whole game was trying to get stuck and unstuck from the mud god that sounds frustrating like, that's yeah a, that's a terrible situation but it had really good mud simulation so it was like the mud would distort and shift and move like it looked really cool but i never picked it up because i'm like i that's a lot of money to get stuck in the mud <laughs> wow. so the um yeah, so NHL, like I said, so it's I don't I'm gonna keep going with it. I, I guess I'm, in some ways I'm still almost compelled, not almost I am compelled to play it. So which is a good sign, and like maybe yeah. kind of gets it becomes a bit more of a power fantasy once you really learn what you're doing. And so, also too, like you know, not everybody plays as much real life hockey as you, and that game. So like the audience of that game, like maybe twenty thirty percent. Oh, I'm just totally making up numbers here, but like. <laughs> what percentage of the people who are playing the game have an opportunity to play a lot of real life hockey as well. So how, like, would that, like you compare it to like, this is like Wednesday night. Why did I just do Wednesday night here? Um, as opposed to like people who don't get on the ice very often being like, this feels really realistic. That's cool. I don't get this anywhere else in my life. (laughs) It's like, I'm I'm bad at normal hockey. Why are you making me bad at virtual? (laughs) Give me something here, man. I paid you money. 
Come on. <laughs> The, uh, if I want to go and not score goals, I could just go play hockey. Like, yeah, yeah. Exact same thing happens. The uh, otherwise, I was playing. A, so I've kept on with Just Cause. Um, the I don't think that people touted the water animation enough. Like that. It's, oh, it was beautiful. That's unbelievable. Like what they and like driving on the, like the jet skis on the water and like hitting the waves. Really fun. It, yeah, that's just fantastic. I'll say that I went through this one mission, and. It's it's one of the characters like I, I can't stand uh, one of my least favorite tropes is the tough female trope. Oh yeah, I know like, who you're talking about. Yeah, it's just really boring. Like it's just like it's like whatever, boys. See if you can, don't don't get your panties in a bunch, ch- chunk, and they always like hit yeah. the gun and they run and just like it's like can you not be tough and have like just any other type of personality? Like as soon as well, clearly this woman is super capable with uh, fighting, so clearly she has to be angry and aggressive and dismissive. Like just yeah. Why can't they be like kind and charming? Yeah, I think you'll you <laughs> hearing you say that. I'm like, yeah, just play Uncharted, man. Just yes. play Uncharted. Sounds like I gotta. Get, I'll get to. It. I'm getting there. Like, I think at this might this week I might crack it out. I wanted to actually get through Just Cause because there seemed to be not similarities, but it's third person action type of things, yeah. and I just I didn't I don't want to have like two on those on the go. I'll say this. So I had so that trope, like that character. We're playing this mission. First of all, the mission is a escort mission. Um, so at this point, fun. which worst like I don't know what game developers are thinking. Those are the worst damn missions in gaming because the AI is so stupid and it's yep. so. And it's I, like, so not I, only you're trying to keep yourself alive, but you're trying to keep this like small little herd of lemmings alive too. And it's just like they're doing everything in their power to not live, and they're so incapable. And everybody's trying to kill them at the same time. And yeah, and it's, just, it's miserable. Like it, it not having fun. And the thing is, like, I think they do it for tension, right? Because like you are super god gunslinger. So what's it matter to you? But you have this other person. This is your brother. Like he's technically a fighter, like a Mario in the game. He's a fighter yeah. as well, I guess. So it's not like he's damsel in distress, but it's still just he's useless. Like relatively useless. And you got yeah. to defend him and keep him alive. And I do. I finally get past it. And it's like, oh no, one more volley of uh, tanks coming in, and they do, and I, so I run over it actually pretty efficiently, like bam, 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 kill them all, and then things kind of just pause for a bit. I'm like, what's up with this? All of a sudden, you hear like, looks like I'm gonna have to save you again, Rico, and it's that the tough girl character, and she comes in on her helicopter, and I guess like I just I beat the animation. And I killed the tanks before she had a chance. So, but she just takes her helicopter and then runs it into the side of a cliff and dies. And I lost the mission. <laughs> so, so it's just like there's nobody, there's no threat. I took care of everything. In swoops the character I hate. Looks like I gotta save you again. <laughs> I'm just like, and she's like, oh, you you have to start again. Natasha died. I'm like, what? She she didn't need to be there. Like, I finished it all, and then she just ran into a cliff. Why are you punishing me? She could have stayed home and just, like, cleaned her machine gun or whatever she does in her spare time, but no. And, like, two or three other times, like, and so I did it a couple times. Like, once more, I think. And again, like, I, liter- I literally killed everybody. I guess, like, because it's... I, you would really just have to, like, kick around. Because at that point, given this, the scenario... Like yeah. you're you're in run and gun mode. Like this one is actually really intense. It was an enjoyable sequence otherwise. Yeah. Um when you kinda ferreted off the your escort away and he was kinda safe. It's actually really intense and you're running around and you're in that mode. This end thing comes up, this last scene where the three are supposed to come in and she's supposed to swoop and like kill three off. And so I killed them all three again, but this time she didn't she managed to not run into the cliff <laughs> and kill herself. So I got to see the end sequence, and there it is. So she gets off the plane, ch-chunk. Well, it looks like I had to save your ass again. I'm like, oh, you shut up, <laughs> like f you, lady. That is awful. And it's not, and that part's not a woman. If any any character could have got off that plane and said that to me, because yep. at that point I had killed thousands of soldiers. <laughs> I could have used her help, their help at any point, but just at being the end, investigated for war crimes, you're doing so well. Oh and... man, I was livid to be to like just that backhanded comment, which is, a again like it that that comment itself is a cliche coming from a cliche character that I hate after they did none of the things that they said they did. Yep, and it's just uh, oh, I was so I was livid. Uh, man, that's funny. 
just oh. So anyway, speaking about being livid, you had, <laughs> you had mentioned that you had heard some news about No Man's Sky. Uh, yeah, I, for I you heard... to have mentioned it, I can't assume it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Make it seem like I'm just some uh, bad news uh, bear. Uh-huh. Um, no, I heard. Um, okay, there's this one person who spent like thirteen hundred bucks to get the game early, and uh, through um, actual channels or through... yeah, it's like a, some official channel. But he paid a, paid a stupid amount of money, got it early, and I guess he beat it in like about thirty hours. <laughs> nice, awesome. And he found the uh, center of the universe. Yeah. And not like on the... purpose. <laughs> he just stumbled into it. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's like, everyone's like, so basically it's like, oh, well, the game's not living up to blah, 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 and it's broken and glitchy. And... <laughs> but it's like, I'm also thinking, it's like, you know what? 30 hours. That's not bad. That's, that's yes. feels good to me. Like, that's going to be a few months. <laughs> Yeah, it's like four months of dad time, easy. Yeah, and but then like it's like found the center of the universe. I'm like, okay, so what? He he proved Hawking wrong. Like, I don't know what. Why are you upset? But I guess there's like a huge group of people who are really upset because it's just like proves that the game isn't living up to its expectations. But that's not really the game's fault when the expectations for the game, like the game is delivering on the things it's saying it's delivering on, but everybody else's imaginations have run amok. And now it's like an unobtainable goal that it's like, well, this game's not curing the Zika virus. So like, why should we have to pay for it? Five out of 10. <laughs> yeah. No, I think the, um, yeah, it's either like, that was either just a remarkable play where you have, because I think when you start you, it's random where you start. Yeah. And he might have just started in the absolute perfect spot, or it's actually just that easy. If you power, it depends how he's playing too. If he, well, you said you you mentioned he wasn't really trying. Yeah, he wasn't looking for the center. He wasn't trying to speed through it. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, I think you know. In many ways too, I mean, you think about how fast. I don't know what the record is, but whatever the record would be for a speed run of Diablo three. Yeah. Right, but for people who enjoy it, like I know that. I have a couple of buddies who just, they keep going through it. Like they play the seasons yep. and they're playing it again and again and again. So, or even like, uh, I think to some regard too, it's, it's a bit more akin to a, call it a Minecraft than it would yeah. be to a linear story game. Cause it's about finding like, there's, a, I think trillion planets like they have. Something like, crazy. So there's a lot to just go and see and explore. Yeah. Like, I'm so, like even that guy who beat it, like I'd be curious to see what happens. Is he, satiated he's like all right i'm just gonna pack it back up in the disc and like go home or is he gonna get back back into a spaceship and fly around and discover some new planets yeah i think it's just gonna be i'm i'm gonna treat it like a flight sim like i just want to fly around and see things that's it really like oh yeah that's that's one of the best things to do i mean some of the the vistas and then like you jump off this one planet and go to the moon which happens to have something and on the way you pass like six star cruisers and then one you graze a shot by accident, so you have to shoot him down. Then you need new materials, so you crash land on the second planet, and you go through. Then there's a sentinel and some other animals you haven't discovered yet. You know, like it, yeah. it's something that kind of puts you through. And in some ways, too, that's almost reassuring because if you ever did want to just like close it off, like all right, I'm done. I'm just going to find the center. At least you know yeah. it's not some unobtainable. It's going to take you 300 hours. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, but yeah, there was a big little bit of nice a nice try, Gavin. Hullabaloo. Enthusiasm maintained. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'll maybe I'll, I'll wait till next week to watch you cry. Yeah, I guess like, geez, what are we now? Today we are recording this on August first. The so I've I've actually pre-ordered. I try not to. I don't necessarily like the pre-order culture around like you know give us money for a game you don't know that's any good yet. Yeah. But this one in particular, just it's you know, it's got its hooks in you. Oh yeah, that's what I'm ready for. I've, 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 there's one other pre-order I did, and that was for Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Okay. But with that one, that was more of a pedigree because I enjoyed one and two so much. Yeah. And given like the trailers and everything, and the fact that trailers were done in game and discussions from the developers and such, it's like, oh, this will be yeah. fine. And oh yeah. And test. It was. I think if anything, it was like an expansion pack that they're like, let's just make this a whole game. Oh yeah. And they did, and it's just it was more of the same, but it was more of good. So yeah, it's like 
That's that's exactly you know? what I was pre-ordering. So it's like yeah, it's like it's like oh, more chicken wings. It's like yeah, more chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like why are you it's the same people like people complaining about the new Jason Bourne movie because like oh, it's it's like the other Jason Bourne movies. I'm like more chicken wings. You're like yeah, you're welcome. Like you're welcome. Day. Your your primary complaint of the Jeremy Renner born movie was that it wasn't born movie. It wasn't born enough. So we gave you a born movie, and now you're complaining is too born. It's like, you know, I think that, I think that, yeah, that happened to I think that happened to Bond a little bit too. Yeah, because because it's all the you found out so much about Pierce uh, Brosnan when he did it. I mean, what did you really know about him? Right, like it was really just. Sexy looking male running around doing sexy stunts with sexy people. You gotta think for Pierce, don't you? Yeah. Oh, who doesn't? You use, use sexy a lot in that sentence. Do you blame me? Come on. No, no I was a handsome man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was just fan- it was a it was a romp, right? But then you you could hear people saying like, oh, you know, when's James gonna evolve? Like, when's he gonna be modern? Yeah. And the recent stint. Uh, so help me with the actor's name. Oh, uh, Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you found out a bunch. He was kind of brooding. He yeah. had a pass. No, you learned a bunch about him. He he like fell in love and quit at one point. Yeah. And now it's kind of like you know you're not hearing a lot of great reviews for like a lot of those Bond films. Yeah, I, I mean I'll where's say like I, I never liked them all. Ones. It's like, <laughs> yeah, where's the fun in this? You yeah. told us to get rid of it. Like, <laughs> yeah, what a gritty realism. Like the worst restaurant patrons ever. It's like. Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. Oh, sorry, I will remove the fly. Here's your soup, sir. Hey, where's my fly? <laughs> Yelp review. Not enough flies in my soup. <laughs> Three stars. Uh, uh. Now the uh, so myself, I'm not. Uh, I think we will be wrapping it up here for the week. Now myself, I'm not drinking a beer, unfortunately. I'm having the <laughs> a delicious drink, which is mimicking a poor. <laughs> Rum and Coke, because it's a Pepsi and whiskey. <laughs> but quite delicious. It's working out for me. But unfortunately, I didn't have a... Uh... I think we could refer to it as an airport bathroom rum and Coke. <laughs> oh, <geez. Yeah. laughs> garage. Uh... <laughs> it goes well with my gra- my uh, gas station cupcakes. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. It's like the, the type of rum and Coke you cobble together with whatever you found so in an gotta airport. Drink, gotta drink something. I, yeah. See, I, I would almost call it like it's fitting for what was a long weekend for us in Canada, because yeah. like that—that that is kind of the cottage experience where sometimes it's just what do we oh, yeah. have in the substandard house yeah. <laughs> to put together a meal or drink? <laughs> Pepsi, Sloppy Joe, Pepsi, Bloody Mary, <laughs> Sloppy Joes, and Pepsi and, and Crown Royal. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it it tastes fine. But unfortunately, that means I didn't have a beer pick for the week. But I understand that you do. I do. Um, here's uh, what's left of it. Wonderful color. Uh, yeah, it's the for, the, um, for the audio listeners. That is a robust red color. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm trying the Rickards uh, Red Session Lager. Um, the can here. Uh, it was one of those times where I went into the beer store and uh, they were doing samples, and I tried a sample, and I liked it. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's actually technically, even though it's a really nice, dark, rich color and it's got a pretty nice flavor to it, um, it's a light beer. Mm-hmm. So, um, not that that's really anything that concerns me. Um, but uh, yeah, it's only uh, 4%, which is good. Um, it's good, but, for dad, yeah. good for dad duties. Yeah. Good for dad duties. Keeps your head in the game. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it takes your head out of the game just enough. <laughs> just enough to not cry. And uh, yeah, no, it, 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 it's a tasty beer. Um, they had a Rattler there as well, but I didn't bother picking it up. Um, it's grapefruit base. And usually I split Rattlers with the wife and she doesn't like grapefruit. So um, we just stick to, uh, we, there's a low and brow Rattler that her and I share. And it's really good. Very lemony. Yeah, so um, the, um, based on my last week's recommendation, um, I, the wife and I were splitting those crabby ginger beers. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah. We, we picked up a bunch more, actually, for this weekend, because it was just, man, those things are delicious. Like, that, those, those are so I'll refreshing. have to check one out. Oh, yeah, I highly recommend it. That is... So is it just very, like, it's like a, like a almost like a ginger, beer, ginger ale kind of thing? Is it heavy, sharp ginger, or is it fairly mild? No, no, definitely mild. That's it. It's, okay. it's like a... Call it almost like an artisanal 
uh, ginger ale. Okay. So you have you have, you know you have your Canada Dry ginger ale. Yeah. And take that as your base. But this is like some hipsters put together really. <laughs> so you yeah, added like Campari and stuff to it. And... <laughs> Really, really basic. So they, they didn't go crazy and add like rosemary and like spices or something. Like it's, but it's just, like, it's, it feels like a higher <laughs> quality. Reason, gin- that's actually a reality somewhere. Yeah, guarantee. If it's not, it's going to be. Um, so they just created a what would taste like a higher quality ginger ale, like something that felt like somebody really made it, as opposed okay. to a big company. And then it happens to be alcoholic. Like the, the alcohol is very subdued, and not in a way, not so much as to hide it from people. Like yeah. Yeah, you're not getting to your fruity drink uh, territory, but it's uh, yeah, super subtle. Like it cool. <laughs> ends up almost being my recommendation a second time. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna comment where it's uh, it's curious to see the big companies kind of hop on the craft or even just like diverse taste bandwagon because if yeah. I'm not mistaken, you'd also recommended the uh, rail railway oh, uh, rail side. Rail no, side. by Sleeman. By Sleeman. Yeah, like Sleeman and Rickards, like those are both companies that are, you know, they're pretty just large breweries. Like they're not really mom and pop operations, but they're starting to play around more because they're seeing that people want variety. They want to try something new. They want people to experiment and, you know, try good stuff and occasionally try, you know, uh, side launch. And, you know, it's uh, a. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm just I feel joking. like I'm gonna have to mail you a side launch. Just to... uh, no, I'll pick one up. I just like they're, they're, literally they're spilling out of the LCBO in my neighborhood, so there's cans <laughs> rolling out of the gate. Um, no, I'll I, pick I one up for next. Week. Still can't find it. Like can't no, find really? the things. Okay. Like I, it's just again, it must be the hipsters in my location. I think it, it's just like your neighborhood is really really popular. My neighborhood, it's a lot of people going in and getting like MGD and stuff and. Actually, my neighborhood is more wine. There's a lot of wine. Like when I'm in a line at the LCBO, it's a lot of wine, and maybe some like uh, Stella and stuff like that. As far as beer goes, um, but yeah, I'll have to pick some up. Right. I will, uh, and if I don't like it, I'll pick so, so you know, I, I prefer it. I'd actually probably get you to not drink it because I need you to drink it in front of Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I was gonna get it this week. But I'm like, no, Jeff should be here. That's why, man. We didn't even like mention at the top that he wasn't around. As far, yeah. as, as, far as anybody knows, he's just been very quiet this episode. Uh, Jeff is nodding his head. He agrees with this. Yeah, yeah. To, to our um, audio only audience, <laughs> Jeff's here. He's fine and dandy. He just yeah, he looks, he looks doesn't great. Want to talk about kids. <laughs> he, yeah, his kids are just sleeping behind him, so he can't speak. So he's just yeah. miming. He's miming what? the entire episode. What's what's that? I look great. Oh, thank you, Joe. That's very Aww. nice of you. What what's that? <laughs> Gavin, you like J- Gavin's glasses? Oh, that's cool. Oh, you're there very we nice. go. Just <laughs> left, right, compliments everywhere. Yeah, Jeff is being so so very nice to us this evening. <laughs> yeah. What's that? You're, oh, he's drinking a side launch. He, Jeff is in the midst of oh, drinking a side launch, and he is that. loving it. Look at his smile on his face. Wait, what was that, Jeff? That's your third one. Whoa! Wow. My goodness, that's your favorite beer now. The I kids love it, it too. Yeah. Okay, let's let's reel that back, Jeff. No, no, it's we were no, no, no. we were doing well. I know your kids might like banana and cloves, but don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more side launch. Oh, uh, Jeff will yeah. be back next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but speaking of next week, <laughs> I think we shall take a step towards it in ending this podcast. Yep. Everybody, thank you again for listening. This has been New Dad Gaming. If you'd like to get a hold of us, you can reach us on our website at newdadgaming.com. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes, the Google Podcast Store, and many other places where podcasts are. If you'd like to ask us a question or submit a show suggestion, reach out to us on the website, Twitter, Facebook, any place you like, and be happy to discuss it. Thanks once again, and until next week, my name is Trevor, and I have a one-year-old and two months. One year and two months. <laughs> My name is Gavin. I have an almost one-year-old. Uh, man, that just rolls off the tongue. Yep. <laughs> All right. See you next week. <laughs> See you. Bye. <laughs>